Chub. Lovely fish. Well, that can be. Well, welcome back to the channel, guys. And we're here again, once again, on the Wellingborough ticket on the River Neen. And it's actually the Batterbrook at, well at Ringstead. Now, the river's got a bit of flow on it today, which is unusual. October, we've had a bit of rain, it looks really nice. Might even be a bit too fast for what I want to do, but I've literally got two hours. It's a really quick session. Um, my missus has got, uh, is going out this afternoon, so I've got the kids this afternoon. And uh, I thought I'd just come down and sneak some, some, uh, a couple of hours fishing. I've got a bit of bait that I wanted to use up. I've got a bit of hemp, a few casters and a few worms. And what I'm gonna do, over there, you'll be able to see it, lovely and fast over there and, and quite even. So I'm gonna fish sort of hemp and casters over there. Loose feed a bit of both, you never know, might catch a, a chub or a few roach. Hoping for a few roach, really. Um, and then down this edge, there's a bit less pace than what there is over there. But down this edge is a lovely, like a, it's the same depth as down the middle, but it's out of the flow a little bit. And I just fancy that for maybe a perch or something. So we'll feed that now. I'm gonna start on that. So I'm gonna put a little bit of bait in with a bait dropper. And we'll pop that in down here. I've got a nice big two gram rig, 13 elastic. I'm just gonna start, I can feed a perchy type swim out in the flow a bit if I want to, but just for now, I'm gonna start off down there and well over depth. So is that emptied yet? So I'll empty that down there. And then across there, I really wanna lose feed, but I am gonna put a few, a bit of hemp and a bit of castor in over there, just with the pot, just to sort of create a bit of an area, just slightly downstream. It's quite windy. I'm hoping if I just put a nice little bed of hemp over there, a few casters. I say I really want to catch some quality fish today, quality roach, quality. I'm just going to put in hemp and casters, pop them in over there quickly. Like I say, this is all just about a nice little pleasure session. <clears throat> While I'm here, while away the morning, as it were. So I'm going to feed it just slightly down. Just like there. And then I can ping hemp over the top. Like that. Odd caster. That's the plant. Right. Let's get started down this edge. See if we can catch. Right, so that's my two spots fed. So let's get going down this edge, see if we can catch a few perch. Right, so let's go get going. I've got a two gram float on, size 14 and 30. I've got decent tackle on, 014. I'm just gonna put best part of a full dendro on. Plenty of hooks showing, just like that. Never know what might come along. I'm just gonna get into the habit of loose feeding over there as well. Nice, you casters. Right, so let's get going. So I don't know what I'm gonna catch, if I'm gonna catch anything, who knows? But we'll have a go. So, still quite fast even down there, so I'm just gonna really sort of hang on to it a bit, really. Fishing well over depth. Oh, there we go. Just straight away. Roach. <laughs> on a full worm. It's actually a rud on a full worm. Not a roach. <laughs> Not really what I was expecting, that. Well down. Yeah, not really what I was expecting at all, that. But we haven't blanked. And that's a good sign for across there. 
So as before, we'll feed it, the casters, a bit of them. So actually going to take this section off. So just sort of lowering it in position, like I say, we're well over depth. We may need to add, there you go, little perch. Oh, he's come off. Little tiny perch, that was. Now, we may need to add even more depth or more shot. It is, like I say, it's pulling through. A little flat fly wouldn't go amiss here, actually, today. Extra pace on. But we'll, uh, we'll fish like this for a start. <clears throat> See what we get. Two bites straight away is a good sign there. A bit of worm on. That's probably. Oh, no indication there. A bit of slack. A tiny perch. <laughs> He's not going to break any records, that one. Still, let's get bites. I'm just going to poke my net out a little bit more. I actually think there might be some fish in here today. Looking at this. So, pretty nice little start. We had a, some bites anyway. It may be that I have to fish this, like I say, I can use the same rig and bait dropping some worms down the middle, but I thought, I'll try on the edge first where the flow's a little bit less. And it might, might be a few fish early down this edge. Now, one thing with fishing for a bonus fish like this, don't give it too long, because if there is one and about, you tend to get them pretty quick. A tiny perch. <coughs> you know, if there is a chub or anything about, you do tend to get them pretty sharpish. I fished this, this bit of the river for chub in the summer and saw loads of silverfish, so there's no doubt there's some roach and stuff in here, but it's whether they're still in here as it's getting colder. But that far bank looks so inviting. Let's go through. Any more casters? Bit of hemp for the far side. The same rules apply as in my previous video. I'll, when I get over there, I'll work out where best to lose feed to catch them. It's quite fast, so until I'm actually over there fishing, I won't really know how best to feed it. Right, so let's have a go over there. Not fed it for long, but we're, uh, let's say we're only shot here for a short session, so. I'm just going to start on a single caster and just see what happens. Hopefully we'll get some bites, but it's quite fast. I might need a different rig to be honest, but we'll give it a go. Put that just upstream. It'll take me a few chucks to get into this, I think. really fast so 
Oh, that. Oh, looks not good. Yeah. What we got? It looks not good straight away. What we got? Chub, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Now I've only got 08 on, so it's not really what I was looking to catch, but oh, a nice chub as well. Come on, my beauty. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. That's not what I was expecting. Look at him. Chub. Lovely fish. Well, that gave me a run around. I've only got five jura slip in. And I didn't know what to expect. But that is just amazing. Right, I'm going to up the... No, I'm not. No, I'm not, because I got him out. No problem. Right, okay. So maybe this is going to be different to what I expected. Now... For those of you who saw that happen, it was quite interesting because I stood up and got the pole really high straight away, which may seem a bit unusual, but basically, if you hook, do hook a fish on light elastic, you've just got to get it out. It's not like a commercial where you keep the pole low and let them run off and all that. You've just got to try and get them out. And the reason why I only have one section of elastic is exactly that. Just then I could quickly get my pole in the air bully the fish and stop it getting in them reeds because as soon as they get in them reeds it's game over especially with 08 so well that was a good start not what I expected at all might need heavier elastic guys so I'm feeding casters and hemp today thought it would be roach fishing to be honest but maybe we're going to be chub fishing oh bite then straight away. Oh, this could be really good fishing. I like this. This is a bit of me. Another bite. So just running that light rig through. The chub won't have been fishing for like this for a long time. Yep. Another fish. Could be another chub this. A bit smaller. Yeah it is. Another chub. <laughs> Amazing. Oh this is just gonna be the session isn't it? This is gonna be the session. Oh boy. It's smaller this time but <sighs> look at that. What a beautiful fish. Single caster again. I'm just using 08, which it's probably a bit light, but for as long as I'm uh, landing them, we'll go with it. It just shows you that, you know, when you finally get to a river with a bit of flow on it, I'm going to actually be really aggressive now with the bait because I think I can be. There's a chance here I could catch a nice net of fish here. So I've never even fished this back brook in these sort of real pole or anything. I've always fished it roving for chub. So that's just really light. It's just running through as natural as possible. fish. A bit more what I was expecting this one. A little roach. Lovely. That's probably more what I was expecting to catch, to be honest. It's amazing. Amazing start. A 
So it's a good job I've got a time limit today because I would be here all day knowing what I know now. I'm just hanging on to it. I've got two back shot on, like I always do. I'm just running it and running it and running it. And I'm not, I'm not bothered about where. It's not, when you're fishing as swim as fast as this, it's not all about being on the bottom and all that. It's just about running it through naturally, especially when there's chub in the area. So that long line comes in. So I can go all the way down there. Like, Bait might have been done. Has my bait been done? No. Gutted. Okay, so I put a slightly stronger hook length on. O10, I'm going to fish double caster. There's obviously some chub about, so I'm conscious that I don't really want to be losing them. I'm not going to neg like that perchy line, but to be honest, now I've caught a few on this. This will be me, I think. I'm feeding before I go out now because I'm conscious that. I've got to be quite quick. If I want to land these chub, I'm going to have to be quick. So I probably tried a bit to bully that one a bit too much, really. Just flick that in. I will put a few casters in around the float. Look at that, going through lovely. Four fourteens. So it's not dotted down or anything, but it doesn't need to be. Oh, I missed it. Just looks perfect on that bank. I've always said it on this river, wherever you find those, the like tunnel bound, I call them tunnel bound reeds, because you get the tunnel bound. Um, wherever you get them on this river, you get chub. Nice roach on double caster. I'm just fishing sort of dead depth at the minute. Um, but I won't hesitate to put a bit more line on the bottom. I'm not really fishing on the bottom because of how fast the river is and it's pushing through and that. I can sort of, I'm pretty much hanging on to it and keeping the, the float going through. as opposed to worrying too much about it being trundling along the bottom. Plenty of bait. Well, I was right up that one. Is there anything better than this? Fast river, not too deep, chub and roach on the pole. I don't think there's anything better than this, personally. Well, that was a vicious game. So I've had three chub on, I've landed two and lost one. It may be that it has to be built up again for chub now because they're pretty shy. Roach again. Don't mind catching these though. So all, it is what we kind of came for. Oh, lovely. Look at them, beauties, double caster. Now what's interesting is we haven't looked at chub since we've put a stronger tackle on. So that's something to bear in mind. It may be that I do need a light up climb to fool them, you never know. Or it might just be that I lost that one and taken a bit of a back foot, which is also possible.
up and away. All right, see what we get this time. Ooh, indication there. There's still going to be a bit of weed in the river as well. It's um, back end of October now, and the weed will be dying off, but there will still be some weed here, so. I will get an odd bite that's not a bite. Bottom end of the swim. No bites. Similar rules apply to the hemp fishing we did the other week, really. I might end up catching on hemp, but while there's some chub about, I can't resist. Roach. A little bleak, actually. We wanted. So I might be, we might not even see another chub now to, for the rest of the day. That is just how this sort of fishing is, really. It's amazing how much difference it can be with a bit of flow because you can just feed a bit more, there's a bit more happening, there's more fish feeding. Now, one thing that's interesting here is nice fish. My bites come quite far down. And like I say, it is quite fast. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to adjust where I feed. I'm going to go even further up. Just for five minutes, just to see if I can get the fish back up a bit, because they're going to be quite hard to catch down there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to feed sort of another metre up. So I say it's fast, so. So I've moved everything up a metre and we'll give it five minutes and just see what happens. Because I'd like to catch like where the float is now and down for the next two metres, really. So we'll adjust the loose feed accordingly. Constantly checking the float by lifting it out and starting again. Tiny fish that time. Tiny bleak. Sun hasn't even come up properly yet. That's how early we are. Love that, so that bite came there. That's where I want to catch him, really. That little area. So running it through, running it through. There we go. Another chub, I think. Yep. So straight away, I'm putting plenty of pressure on him. He's gonna, if I don't put pressure on him, he's gonna come off anyway, so I might as well chance my arm, get the pole in the air. It's not a roach, it's not a chub, it's a great big roach. But I might as well get my pole in the air. Oh, yes, I think it's a rud. Yeah, I might as well get the pole in the air and get him, and get him out rather than sort of just letting him run, run amok. Look at that, bar of gold. Great big rud look. How good's that? He went well, didn't he? Double caster. Amazing fish in this. Right, the session's going really well. 
I've had a dozen quality roach, that big rod two chub, a few perch down this edge, although I've not actually checked up on that recently, and I probably won't now, to be honest. And what I'm going to do is put a bit of depth on. I'm another four or five inches on. Just see if that makes any difference to bites. We're getting a bite all the time, and now I've moved the, moved the bait upstream a bit, the loose feed. It's definitely working. I'm catching much higher up my swim, so I'm not having to go as far down, which is important when it's a tricky wind like this. It doesn't look windy, but there's a, a, quite a stiff downstreamer on. And uh, if I get, if I let the rig go too far down, I actually lose a bit of control. So feeding that a bit higher up seems to have worked. So I'm actually feeding probably a bit higher than what I'd like to, but obviously it's a faster river today. So, and I don't, want to feed them too high up because we know what happens them roach especially will be up there so i've put a bit more depth on let's see what happens doesn't seem to be too much weed in the area and inquire it little inquire it interestingly i've not looked a chub since i've put heavier heavier line on It might be a coincidence because I did lose one. But you know what they're like, they're crafty, as Des would say. I love sessions like this. I don't know what we're going to catch. I've never. Oh, far bank reeds looking at that. See, there's a downstream's got up, and it just. Hang on, Ted. Top lip. One more go. I love sessions like this, just pleasure fishing. A couple of rigs up. The van is. Just there. What's better than this? It's funny with chub. Sometimes they're greedy and they want like that, something like that, a big, big bait like free casters. Other days they want the small bait, single maggot, single caster. And to be fair, the two I've caught so far have both been on single caster. So maybe a tiny hook and single caster is the way. Neen is exceptionally clear, even though it's carrying colour today, it's still clear. You never know. Sometimes, like I say, for triple caster can really work well. And that's what we've got on here, so. Oh, I buried triple caster. Absolutely buried. Unbelievable. And again. Come on, Joe. They could be chub then. That I've missed out on. They call me Mr. Chub from now on. Bite a chuck on triple caster. No conversion. It's about to the killing zone now. Saw it go. I think that's small fish. Not getting anywhere near them. How long have we got left? Not long, long left. Right, so we're coming to the end of my short session. And it's been amazing to be honest. I've had uh, there's two chub, that big rud. I've had a big perch off camera. I actually caught it while I was filming on my phone, funny enough. 
uh, and loads of roach. The roach fishing has been really good. So, just going to sort of have another 10 minutes now. No more signs of any chub, but I did lose one in the swim, which they're crafty, aren't they, chub? And sometimes they get the ump. So, maybe if I sat here all day, I'd probably catch a few more, but I haven't got that time, unfortunately. So, I'm just going to uh, see what the next 10 minutes holds. It's noticeable that when this wind disappears, and I can present my bait really well. I get, I get bites really, really easy, like good bites. I mean, I'm getting bites anyway, but well, I get a like that's something good. That is something good. Could be a chub. That could be a chub, boys and girls. I'm keeping my pole in the air, like I just don't care. I feel it in some weed. So I might lose it anyway, so I've got to give myself a chance of landing it. And generally with chub, if you get... Oh, it is. Oh, it is, Jack, boys. Not generally, if you get them a, a gulp of air, then you can get them in. There. Well, I was going to have 10 more minutes, but I think for the end of the video, a nice chub like that is the perfect ending. Look at that, on the pole. Really doesn't get much better than that, does it? My favorite fish in the whole wide world. Don't get to catch them on the pole very often, but that is amazing. So, brilliant fishing here on the River Neen. Something a little bit different. As in a short pleasure session on a venue that probably rarely gets pole fish, so hope you've enjoyed that. I certainly have. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment below, and we'll see you again on the next video.